Hello, my name is John Stayskull, and I have a problem. I'm a new game idea junkie. You're an animal! Hey, what's up guys? So recently my addiction for indulging in new game ideas came to a bit of a tipping point and I was forced to make a dramatic decision to ban myself from having new game ideas. And I imagine many of you out there, if not most of you, can relate to this um, affliction of abundant ideas, both a curse and a blessing. You know, so what is this affliction? Well, quite simply, every time you step into, you know, a hot shower or go for a walk or exercise or something like that, you have a flood of new ideas come to you, you know, and you scramble for your phone or for your notebook so you can start jotting down the great new idea. And normally this wouldn't really be considered a problem because, you know, good ideas are good ideas. But when you have an existing game project that's open that needs critical attention, well, you know, it's a bit of a different story. I went for this late night run the other week and it was just awesome, you know, my blood was flowing, my brain was lighting up with ideas and this one particular game idea came to me. And I was just like, whoa, this idea is amazing. It was like a beat em up rogue. And I was like, holy crap, I need to make this game. <laughs> so I went home and I started like um, drafting game design documents for it. And the next day I reached out to my game developer buddy, Oliver Joyce. And we kind of talk and exchange ideas sometimes. And I told him I got this great new idea and I gave him the synopsis. And I was like, man, good, but, um, you know, add it to the pile, right? <laughs> and that's exactly what the situation was, you know, add it to the pile, add it to the growing pile of extracurricular game ideas that may one day be made, maybe they won't be. The funny thing is with these ideas, often if you let them sit long enough, you come back to it in a month or two months or even a year, you look back and you think, it's a bit weak, you know, I'm not sure this would have really... Um, worked out. You see, there comes a point of diminishing returns with game ideas where you have more game ideas going in than game ideas that are being actioned. Or as is often the case, no ideas being actioned. And that makes sense because game ideas are the easy part. That's the easy fun part, right? It's the action that is and always has been the difficult part. All practicing game developers know this. And I love these ideas, guys, that will approach you, you know, because they have some great new groundbreaking idea. And they know you're a developer, so they need your help to develop it, right? <laughs> Quite often for free, because the idea is so amazing and valuable that why not? You know, clash of candy saga league. Groundbreaking. Because the value is all in the ideas, right? No. How does the saying go? 1% inspiration, 99% perspiration? Yeah. So anyways, I had to officially close the door on new ideas coming in, at least until Blood and Mead is wrapped up. And it's been hard and painful because one of my favorite pastimes has always been zoning out and indulging in new game ideas. You know, it's a lot of fun. But when you start drafting up game design documents for new game ideas, when you have an existing project that needs critical attention, well, you know, it's a, yeah. So now, simply, when any new idea comes to me, I'm kind of prepared for it, and I just say no. All right. Know that the faucet of new game ideas isn't going anywhere. You know, when the slate is clear and the time is right, it'll turn back on. We solo developers and designers often get this feeling of FOMO, where we don't want to miss some incredibly potent new idea that has popped out of the ether. And it's usually not an issue, but you know, when you already have uh, filled notebooks or lists of new game ideas, then that's another thing. You know, there is a mental cost to having new game ideas. They can absorb um, a lot of our attention and motivational currency. That can often be better spent on an existing project solving existing problems. And the worst case scenario, you might actually derail your main project completely. 
I'd love to hear some of your stories too, kind of if you've had run-ins with this uh, situation of having too many game ideas and maybe how you approach it or deal with it yourself. So leave a comment down below and tell me a bit about your situation or better yet, come uh, visit on the Lost Relic Games Discord and we can have a, a discussion about it. It's always a bit more fun. As developers, we really need to focus on our existing open projects and make them as good as they can be. You know, dragging them out for too long, we risk um, growing out of love with them is the best way I can think about it. And, you know, that's often where the new sexy ideas start seducing us into a new romance. Here's the thing I've come to realize about every single game project. They always start out hyper exciting and looking very exotic. We think this will be the one. The idea is so novel and captivating that it's going to be an absolute treat to develop all the way through. But after that initial honeymoon phase, they always become that same familiar grind that all game projects ultimately become. And then, yet again, you might be drawn to yet another new game idea. And the vicious cycle of perpetual prototyping continues. And we see this often in the public indie dev space with a lot of developers constantly prototyping and dabbling, but rarely committing to that, you know, long-term marriage. Why? Because, you know, marriage is hard. There's a lot of compromise to be had. Believe me, I know. Okay. Hey, what are you talking about? Nothing. But in the end, it's that long-term marriage that will pay the dividends. People aren't going to pay money for a prototype or an idea. Not really. You need to give them a complete experience. So if, like me, you suffer from this same affliction of having too many new exciting ideas, become aware of it. That's the first thing I can um, recommend for you guys. And try to redirect your focus into finding solutions to existing problems, not creating new ones. I've been asked before, you know, what's my main motivator driving me forward with my current project. And as much as I'm motivated by, you know, profit and sales and glory and whatever, you know, I'm even more motivated by the prospect of having a clean slate so I can comfortably work on a new game idea. <laughs> That's the funny thing, you know, we always want the next thing. That's... um. That's a creative thing, I think. We get bored. You know, we want to keep moving forward. Over the years, I've filled notebooks with new ideas. They're, they've, I've got them hiding in every corner of this room. And a younger, foolish me might have leapt onto one of those ideas by now. You know, but no, I'm committed to making Blood and Mead the best Viking adventure RPG, side-scrolling, combat, puzzle platformer it can possibly be. <laughs> but the only way I can do that is if I continue to give it the attention it needs, which at times admittedly can be limited, you know, because of family, work, hobbies, showering. Don't forget to shower, guys. If there's one thing you take from this video, let it be to shower regularly. <laughs> this year I did kind of um, take a bit of a a slight step back with the YouTube you might have noticed, but only so I can focus in and work on the game and get it out and, you know, kind of lead by example and um, take you guys through the whole process and then to the launch and eventually talk about the launch and, you know, the marketing I, I did and all that stuff. So um, expect that, that I will get back to being having a more regular upload cycle where I talk about all the different things that I discovered and realized throughout the development process of this project. So, oh, and by the way, please do wishlist um, Blood and Mead. It's gonna be pretty cool, I think. I've put a lot of my um, heart into it, you know, a lot of, um, I've put a lot into it. <laughs> so uh, please do give it a wishlist. I'll really appreciate it and it would really um, help this game when it comes to launch. And finally, I will say, Dabbling in mini side projects is not a bad uh, thing sometimes. It all depends on the state of your current main project, you know, and how involving development is. Because sometimes we might need a bit of a, a sea change or a change of scenery so we don't start resenting the grind too much. You know, you've got to have um, kind of a push-pull cycle, tension and release. 
kind of thing. So you've got to have um, some milestones where you can reward yourself in some ways. And it's, sometimes that means to kind of experiment with a new prototype or something just to keep yourself entertained and happy, you know. And I do that sometimes, you know. I build a few of these uh, different um, kits through the process of making those kits, yes, they're very useful for other people. Um, by the way, if you want to learn how to make either car games or platformers, you can uh, check those out. Um, but they gave me a way to also kind of express myself in a different way, you know, play with some new mechanics. Absence makes the heart grow fonder, or so they say. But it should be done with planning and intent. Not a hole you inadvertently roll into and then you can't get out of, you know, because that's what often happens. We get tripped up in some new game idea and before we know it, that's our new main project and we've kind of forgotten the other one and we don't want that to happen, right? So anyways, I hope this video has been useful and given you a moment of uh, reflection on your own journey and with your own current projects. Thanks to all my Patreon supporters who are supporting the channel. You guys are awesome and you are big motivators uh, for this channel and my work. You primarily drive it because, you know, YouTube itself does very little to kind of incentivize um, small channels like mine. So anyway, thank you guys. See you all in the next video. And as always, good luck on your game dev adventures.